Ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to our latest product focus piece and this time we are out with New Holland at the 2022 Scott Grass uh, event. So like I say, we're out with New Holland and we are here to check out the latest uh, belt baler which is the Pro Belt, Correct, I believe. Yeah, it is. And to talk us through it, we've got Mr. Sean Whittingham yep. from, uh, from New Holland. So Sean, yes. let's, let's dive straight into this yeah, then. So I mean... First of all, what model is this? Where so, does it sit in the family? Yeah, so this new Pro Belt Baler is very new to the New Holland family, so it's not a replacement as such, it's an addition to our Baler range. So we have the Roll Belt, which everybody loves, and we've added this Pro Belt, so it's more of a, a contractor machine now. So we've got something that you know offers our whole customer base. Um, the Pro Belt offers two models, so the 165 and the 190 model. It's so in terms of where you're pitching this, yep. pitching this baler then, it's uh, it's up another level. Correct. It's, it's yeah, a higher yeah. so spec the, sort so of the offering. Belt, yeah, the old belt currently, you know, is a is a good farmer machine who's doing a lot of straw, haylage, some grass maybe. Um, but this pro belt offers something a bit more heavy duty, higher volume of bales. You know, it'll cope with more uh, more power on the front, for instance, and uh, greater capacity at the end of the day as well. So right. that is uh, is. Yeah, the ideal contractor. And machine. what sort of crops are you aiming this one at? Uh, like you say, the other one could do a yeah, bit of silage, bit of again, haylage. Same again, really, it'll do a variation of crops. Uh, traditionally, belt balers are bought for straw, but as we've um, had this baler on test for the, I don't know, past two, three years now, to be fair, and we've tried in various crops from silage, haylage, hay straw and uh, whatnot so it, it works well in all crops yeah. so well that's it yeah. once upon a time ago we won't yeah, have yeah, dreamt exactly. of putting a belt baler nope. in silage especially exactly. these you yeah, know exactly. these slightly this wetter be, conditions yeah this will be a good test fit uh, this year in this, in this wet scottish grass so <laughs> we'll see how <laughs> if it works here it'll work, work anyway. anywhere exactly yeah perfect so obviously belt baler variable yeah. chamber what Correct. dimensions are we talking so, on this uh 165 is a max yeah. But we can go down to a 0.9 metre bale, so anything in between that range. Right. So, Sean, let's get stuck into the nitty gritty of this yeah. bale. And we'll start, well, we'll start right at the front end here. No problem. Uh, what sort of hydraulic requirement? We've only got two spools here now. We've done away with the amount of spools needed. So we've only got one spool for the tailgate and one spool um, operates the pickup knife selection and the drop floor right. on this baler. So it's all, you can select that through the screen. So there's three buttons, you select either yeah. pick up, knife selection or drop floor, and it's all done through the screen. So. Perfect. And uh, just a note, just to say this um, is only an isobus baler, so it doesn't have uh, you know an additional screen and whatnot. You can just plug it straight in and away to go. That's it, straight so, off. Yeah. If you didn't have a screen, Comes could you guys... Baler. Yeah, Comes you could supply a screen yeah, yeah, yeah. if, if so, needs be. Yeah, we can uh, supply a kit. It comes with a baler anyway, the screen, harness, fix it to the tractor, and away to go. Job's good, isn't it? Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Well, we'll have a look at that in a little bit, bit yeah, in a no bit. No problem. But we'll, uh, for now, we'll carry on backwards through the baler. So obviously, yeah. drawbar, plenty of adjustment in there. Plenty of adjustment, yeah. So we've got adjustment on these bolts here, just to suit the tractor, and obviously the tyres on the tractor. We need to... Obviously have very good wide opening to uh, improve the feeding and have maximum feeding. And then into the pickup, so we've got a five time bar pickup cam track. So I know we have tested cameras tracks yeah. in the past. I was um, going to say, why do you stick with the cam track? Uh, we stick with the cam purely because it, it rotates slower. So it'll grab and it'll spend more time cleaning up the swath. Yeah, so and that, a sweep. Exactly, really. a nice yeah. sweep in action and it presents it nice into the into the rotor there as well so that's it and then we just touched on it before i mean yeah. the the drive line i mean what's the route yes on this so on this uh, pto shaft comes into a gearbox splits the drive now left and right so we've got a split drive okay previously it's always driven on the one side Straight on the down there. belt yeah. yeah exactly this pro belt splits the drives drives the left hand and the right hand side so we've got the main chamber drive on this side yeah. and then the rotor pickup drives on the far side there then Okay, and then I suppose you could say the baler frame, chassis, whatever you want to call yep. it, that's all integrated exactly, with the drive yeah. line, is Correct. it? Yeah, so it's very strong, very heavy duty, and we'll, um, yeah, we'll cope with tough conditions. So. That's what it's meant for, is exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. So. Lovely, right, so yeah, carrying on with yep. the pickup then. So yeah, five time bar, what width is it again, sorry? 2.35 metre wide, so it's a very wide pickup. Obviously, if you're mowing and leaving it out like this, it's, it'll sweep it up, no problem. And then you've got your crop press roller on yeah, there and some exactly. finger so time. So. Correct, yeah, so just to present it so you can compress the crop, keep it tight into the pickup so you've got very good feeding. 
and the adjustment is just on this chain link here as well so you can lower it just to suit the crop as yeah well, so. and that's all standard stuff on this correct yeah, yeah. exactly perfect and then yeah just sort of channeling the channeling the crop yeah. towards the center what you got so in there so we've got augers on the sides both sides and then feeding it into this big rotor so it's the largest rotor on the market very very heavy duty check you huh? 500, right. 520 mil rotor and right. um the material you've gone forage wagon style <laughs> exactly so we've gone very big and um yeah hard wearing as well so the the material used on that rotor is very hard harder than hard ox right so it's very very heavy duty very hard wearing right so hard it'll, hard it'll hard last, ox. it'll last a long time yeah right well speaking of the the feed rotor i mean underneath the yeah. Knife options, what yeah. have you got going so on? So we have three options, we've got a rotor feeder and we've got a rotor cutter. So we've got 13 knife and a 25 knife option. Right. But with the 25 knife option you can select 12 or 13 or 25 from the cab. You, like so you do all that from the cab? Yeah. On the, can you on. do it on the go? Or? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. 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 So you can literally do half a day with one, Correct, switch yeah. over, switch half a day with exactly. the other. Exactly. So. Right. Or all in, all out. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, I mean as we can see here on the end of the pickup, obviously yep. you've got the jockey wheels there, I presumably they'll all be adjustable and... Yeah, all adjustable here on these holes, so you can uh, tune it to, to your needs basically, just to, you know, to match your uh, ground conditions and make sure you're not too low or too high missing crops, so That's you, can, it. you can set are those needed. permanently in place or can you take them off for those narrow Yeah, you can take gateways. them off, yeah, you can take them off and they bolt in the front here and this hole here right. for transport so just to keep the width down a little there bit you on go, the road, but so. they're in line with the wheels anyway so yeah, you're, exactly, you're sorted exactly. aren't you with these big fat boys, these big here, boys on the back yeah there you go yeah so getting into the guts of the machine then i mean yep. go on give, give, give us the reveal give show the reveal, yeah. let's have a look so underneath your Big diameter feed rotor yep. there then. I yep. believe you got a fancy pants new drop we floor, have have you? indeed, we have. So this drop floor on the side here obviously is positioned underneath the rotor. It's sprung loaded, so it's always active. So if there's a big lump, she'll only open up to three mil, yeah. and then, then she'll indicate on the cab that either the operator's driving too hard, etc. So you're, you're taking the mick now, <laughs> basically. <laughs> That's what it comes up with exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. there, sorry, Jim. A little bit, but yeah, so it's active, sprung loaded, always working. Um, and the knives are hydraulically protected, so it's a hydraulic knife bank. Right. So you've got uh, two accumul accumulators on either side, so it's not an individual knife protection system anymore, it's hydraulic, so if, uh, if a big object comes in, for instance, it'll drop the knives ever so much, um, just to allow the, the lump of grass through, for instance. So. Okay. Well, while we're around this side, Sean, I mean, yep. talk us through, again, you know, continuing this drive line. Yep. What have you got, sort of, so, what's happening up here? Yeah, exactly. So on this, um, on this baler, the drive sy system is very, very heavy duty. So we've got diamond cut chains, larger sprockets, and a vast more area covered. So the chain overlap there is um, greater than the roll belt basically. So it ensures very good uh, operation, very good feeding and continuous uh, good drive basically through the rollers. I think the chains are actually tested at 30,000 bales. So we, they're very, very hard wearing, very long lasting as well. So it's, it's ease of mind for the customer as well. When you keep baling throughout the season, you, you tend to not have any issues with these, um, with this system any definitely so. That's it, and you've got auto lube on here as well. Is that a standard auto feature lube. on this? Yeah, auto lube on auto greasing as well. So everything is, yeah, because it's a premium, you know, baler. So everything is uh, full bells and whistles, auto lube, auto greasing. So it's all set of standard. Yeah. You got it covered. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Sound well. I tell you what, we'll slide back to the front again if you want to. Yeah. Uh, Open up. Pop this panel now. Yeah, no problem. So your net feeding yep. style, what have you guys gone so for with this? We've still got the duckbill system on this uh, on this baler, very reliable for us. Um, we use on the roll belt baler as well. So it's basically duckbill feeds it in into the chamber and just wraps around the baler. Yeah. So we've got three positions. Um, we've got two storage areas and obviously the using roll um, of net. So, so you've got store there. Storage on the side, one storage on the top, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's a very reliable duckbill system for us, so right. it works well. And what's your sort of, uh, I mean, what's your loading procedure? How are we getting it in there? Yeah, no, that's fine. I'll show you now. Pull it out to the side, pull this pin out, drop the net roll off and replace with a new one. And then she goes. There's a diagram then showing the, op well, the operator, the customer, what way the net needs to be routed in. So it's very easy. And you've got this little tool here just to guide the net. Oh, just give it a poke in. Yeah. 
so it ensures it will get uh, caught on the bale as you net in. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, chamber wise, obviously, yep. belt baler. Exactly. You've gone yeah. for, I mean, looking at it, you've gone for four belts. Correct. Yeah. So it's a bit different from the roll belt. The belt is slightly different texture wise. Um, very heavy duty belt. And then obviously we've got the rollers in the front to start the, the bale off. Yeah. Um, pressures wise, it's 160 bar is the max pressure. Um, with the geometry of how it works, it is a, a dense bale. So the 160 bar mightn't be 160, it might be a bit more really, you know, in, in terms of pressure. Yeah. Um, I know some people think our 200 bar is the, is the magic figure. Um, but the is it about it's, what you do with it? Exactly. Is that what it is? Exactly. <laughs> it's the engineering and the d design. You know, it, it works well, and the, the bales that it, it pumps out really are very, very solid bales. Right. Um, in yeah. terms of that bale density. Yeah. Can you adjust that in zones as yes, well? Yes, you can. You can set an inner core density and then the outer density. So you can set the size of the core, the pressure of the core, and the overall size and overall density as well on the outside. So. Right. So yeah, we can see a bit more of the mechanism on this side yeah. of the bale. I mean, talk us through kind of door locking as well. Yeah, so mechanical lock on the back here. And obviously the tailgate is operated by a hydraulic ram, both sides. Um, on the 190, should I say, the 190 Pro belt, there's two springs. On the 165, there's only the one right. spring. So with the larger bale, the, the spring obviously keeps the tension on the bale to yeah. create a, a hard bale, you know. So yeah, it just gives the it that bit more. Keeps the density in there, yeah, there exactly. We go. And are these the, the blanks that you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, these are the blanks. So if you don't want to run knives, you can put these blanks in. Basically, just it fills the slot so no crop will gather in the slot and you can't re-engage the knives. But with this system hydraulically engaging, it will force the knives up. Um, but yeah, we we uh, recommend putting these blanks in anyway if you're not chopping. So Yeah, that's it. Keeps it all cleaner. Keeps it clean, so, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's it. Spot on. <laughs> so this is the motor that drives it in. So this is the duct bill that I was talking about earlier. So the net is fed through here, and then as this rotates, it comes down, feeds it into the chamber, and obviously wraps around the bale to net the bale up then. Yeah. And then like you're saying, the split drive, this is for yep, all Yeah, exactly. The... So this comes down to the rotor at the bottom and the pickup, and the far side is the main chamber drive. So yeah. Yeah, splits the drive, splits the load through the baler, kind of makes it more efficient in the way it works so you're not loading one side you know all the stress through one chain etc yeah you're so not getting all that torque just exactly, down at one end exactly yeah. yeah so it splits it and it's kinder on the baler as well so there we go right well uh, shall we shut this up and then yeah. uh, we'll have a chat about panels yeah yeah bit of panel chat bit of so panel yeah chat, i mean yeah. Daft as it sounds, but yeah. I mean, talk us through the panels, exactly. the new family look. So this is the new family look, as you say. So this is the natural flow deckling now. This is um, something that's been out maybe over a year now. Um, so all the all the machinery that we will be releasing will be having this uh, styling package on it. So the new T5s, for instance, have the, the Stage 5 new natural flow deckling. Um, so the, yeah, the whole the whole family is going to the new styling. This is where it's all heading. Exactly, this yeah. So it looks really smart, looks re looks the part, you know. Yeah. Very modern look, premium machine. So. Yeah, and in terms the of your the rest of your round baler range, yeah. will we see this sort of mig this look migrate through the family? Yeah, in time, yeah, in it'll time, come. Yeah. In time, it'll come. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And would you say this is kind of like a proper statement yes. piece from New Orleans? Yeah, Holland, definitely. We're definitely. serious about the round baler market. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, definitely is. So, uh, like I said, it's not a replacement; it's an addition. So, yeah. we are very serious about this round baler segment, and we believe this baler will suit a lot of customers and a lot of contractors as well. So, there we go. Well, before we uh, wrap up, we mentioned it earlier on. Let's have a look the at screen. this screen. Yeah, no problem. So, Sean, I mean, talk yep. us through controls. Right, so this is the Isobus screen, so we can see a very nice, easy uh, layout to use. So on the bottom here, we've got bale counts. So we've got uh, total bale count, uncut bales, uncut bales there. As I mentioned earlier, on the spool valves, so we've got three functions. So there's only one spool valve being used. We can use it for the pickup, we can select drop floor, or we can select knives. To change the knife selection, you click it again, you can uh, select 12 knife, 13 knife, or 25 knives. 
and then when you want to set the the bail size the bail density we click this box here we can set the outer uh, pressure size and then the core pressure and core size and how many layers of net we need to use so we can uh, select through these various options pressure we can max up at 160 bar and then size we can adjust as well throughout these various options so 90 to 165 centimeters the core we can also do the same so we could also run at 160 bar core so if you're at 160 and a 160 we could, yeah, really so wind it up. It'll be very, very hard bail, exactly. Yeah. And then Get the, that water out exactly, completely. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then the, the core size as well, we can select from 90 to 125 centimetres. And once all is OK, just click the OK, and then that's set to go. Up the top corner here, we have a manual mode and an automatic mode. So manual, you'll have to tie the bail off manually once you've stopped. Um, but the automatic, basically, once the bail has been um, formed. She'll feed the net in uh, after a second delay up to the user so he can select the the amount of time uh, it delays for basically so you can set it to whatever you want. Um, if we go into the menu, so we've got user preferences, machine configuration, alarms, faults, etc. So diagnostics, bail size again, duck bail and drop floor settings, and then hydraulic functions and reboot controller so hopefully you'll never need to use them um, talking about this front screen here so you'll see these bars your fill indicators so your left and right fill as you're bailing these bars will fill up so to maintain an even shaped bail also oh, to give you a bit of a clue which exactly which side of the swath you want exactly. to be on yeah right. correct and this sort of i mean effective kind of home page up yeah i presume that'll be pretty much the same whatever terminal this is yeah exactly exactly like yeah that. yeah so this layout is coming now um across all of our bailer range so it's very very similar um if you if you run a big bailer for instance and a round bailer you know it's quite easy to use because it's very self-explanatory and it, it looks the same kind of thing so yeah all these bottom bars are also um reconfigurable so basically press and hold and then you can select what you want to, to feature in that box all right so you so can, you have can the, select whatever one yeah, you want yeah. so you could have the info that yeah. you want to see exactly right? yeah okay. much like your terminal with the exactly, run screens yeah. exactly. effectively yeah. everything's reconfigurable to the user so right. it makes it easier for them okay and you were saying before sort of earlier on uh, if uh, you weren't running a new Holland tractor, mm. you would supply a yeah. terminal with it. Would it be something much like this? Exactly or? the same. It's exactly the same, exactly this, the same right? screen, and you'll just have a, a mounting bracket to mount in the cab, and then away to go. So you'd run a harness, um, we'd supply the harness with the screen, connect that up, and you're good to go. There you go. So if you don't have a Isobus tractor, you don't need one, you mm. just plumb it up and wire it in, and you're good to go, yeah. So, Sean, we've just seen what's in the cab, yep. control, all that kind of thing. Um, Technology-wise, yes. what else can it do? Does it have anything else up its sleeve? Yeah, so obviously, Isobus Control Baler, we also have an IntelliBail feature as well, right. which we can have on this model. Um, also on the roll belt as well. Um, so it is a system that basically the baler controls the tractor. So it'll control forward speed, etc. bail drop-off, so open, close, and away again. Um, that feature is only, uh, well, you can get it through parts, you just need a sensor on the tailgate and then an activation code through the screen. Right. So um, it's a very, very good feature to have. Yeah. yeah. It's something this season we'll be looking to do demos with, uh, touring the country um, with this baler, um, advertising it, getting out there to the customer network. I was going to say, it's because um, it's, it's been yeah. talked about for a while, exactly, but is yeah, it just yeah, sort of slowly getting yeah, out there exactly. now? exactly. We're just gearing up for the summer now, getting it out and about, and obviously with the IntelliBail feature, it'll work brilliantly. Perfect. There we go, Sean. Well, thank you very much for no talking us around your new bailer. It'll be good to uh, yeah, see it in action in real-world conditions yeah. at some point, yeah, no which problem. should be good. Yeah. Uh, as ever, thank you guys for watching. hope you enjoyed that. hope you may have uh, learned something from myself and Sean. Mainly Sean, to be honest, really. <laughs> We're going to be honest about it. 
So again, thank you very much for watching. As ever, go check out that there, landpowertv.com for more uh, custom reviews, uh, our reviews, and yeah, product walk around pieces like this as well. And yeah, we shall see you next time. <laughs>